Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome again to Coffee in the Word. Listen, grab your Bible. We're going to take the next few moments and look at some things that I believe will be a blessing to you. You know, we're living in a, a world that everything is natural. Everybody's wanting to identify with this and identify with that. But you know, God created us to be an, uh, to identify with Him and to walk with Him. Man is a spiritual being, and we're to live in the, in the things of the Spirit of God. And Paul, writing here to the Thessalonians, said this in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, now may the God of peace himself. Notice that God is peace. You ever notice that when God comes into your life and into your situation, the very first thing he does is he brings peace. You know, the Lord begins to minister. And you begin to feel his presence. What's one of the first things you'll do? You'll go, thank you, Lord. And you start feeling that peace because he's a God of peace. He's not a God of turmoil. He's not a God of, of stress and depression and, and, and burden and weighing down. No, God always brings peace. You know, every time the, 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 the Lord would appear to somebody, He'd say peace to them and He'd speak peace into them. And, and He spoke peace to the storms of life and storms and natural storms and all the things that went on. So the first thing you need to get a revelation of is God is peace and He's going to deal with you from a place of peace and He's going to bring you out of your turmoil, out of your conflict, into a place of peace and rest and a place where you can just begin to ease down and relax and then begin to enjoy yourself. Amen. Enjoy life. In fact, he goes on, he says this, now may the God of peace himself, notice God wants to do this in your life. What's that? Sanctify you completely. You know what the word sanctify there means? It means to set apart. It means to make holy. It means to make full, complete. It means to separate from. And so God Himself wants to be involved in your life to help you to separate yourself from the things that are destroying you, separate you from sin. He wants to separate you from worry and fear and anxiety. He wants to separate you from sickness, disease, poverty, lack of want. Everything that's a part of the curse of the law, God wants to be involved in your life to help you to be set free from that and live a victorious life. And then notice this, he says this, And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that God doesn't want you to just get born again and saved and then just be defeated the rest of your life. He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to live in a holy life. And He wants you preserved. He wants you walking in victory even until the time that you go to be with the Lord Jesus or He comes and receives us up into Himself. But now notice here, I want you to see this because all throughout this month we're going to be talking about this. Notice he says your whole spirit, soul, and body. Notice that, that, that you and I as human beings, we are a threefold person. Hallelujah. Just like God is, is, is a triune being, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He created us spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is the, the real you. It's the part of you that lives forever. It's your heart. When we talk about the heart of man, we're talking about his spirit. We're talking about the part of him that's, that's created the image of God. Then your soul is your mind, your thinking, your attitudes, your, your personality, actually. You know, uh, the things that, that go on in your mind are, is your soul. Your soul and mind can be replaced. And then, of course, your body is this physical body we live in, you know, that we, we contact each other with, praise God. And, you know, when we begin to see this, God wants us to be victorious spiritually, and we get victorious spiritually by asking Jesus in our heart, making Jesus Lord of our life. When we get born again, God changes our heart. The Bible teaches us that we're born of the Spirit of God, and we become children of God, and, and we become uh, heirs of God, and we are adopted by God. So we take on God's nature. So God takes care of our spirit. But then notice he says he wants your soul to be changed. What's that mean? Once you're born again, God wants you to begin to work on that head. He wants you to change the way you see things and the way you think. And the way you do that, Romans 12, 2 says that you have to be renewed in your mind. You have to get in the Word, begin to change the way you think. And we're going to really deal with this part of this verse over this next few times we're together, praise God. And then, of course, your body, you, you know, God wants you glorifying God in your body by living a holy life. Amen. So today, I want to challenge you. Look to the Lord. Walk in His peace. Let God enter into every area of your life. Let Him enter into your spiritual life. Let Him enter into your emotional, your mental, and into your physical life. And let God begin to do a work in you because He loves you and He cares for you and He will not forsake you. He'll not leave you and He'll always be there and He's just a prayer away. Amen? So today, 
get in the work, let's begin to set ourselves that we're going to let God do a mighty work in us spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and we're going to begin to walk with the Lord and walk in the peace and the blessing of the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Listen, I pray this has helped you. God loves you. He wants you to be blessed, so let Him begin a work in you today, and what He begins, let Him complete and fulfill. And until next time, I'm praying for you that God's very best will be yours.